the show. I'm Evie. Uh, we have uh, Sophia and Larry Hull today um, at uh, Historical Lexington Community Center. Sophia and Larry are Lexington long-term residents of 50 years, and they're here to talk about the Chinese community history and in the past, and present, and the future. I'm Sophia Hull. I came to the United States after I graduated from high school. We've lived in Lexington for 15 years. I'm Larry Hall. I came to the United States in 1950 as a teenager, and I've lived most of my life on the East Coast for 65 years, and in Lexington for 50 years. Tell me a little bit about the uh, Chinese community history in the past 50 years. Well, when our children were two and four, almost school, going to school time, and we asked around, and also at that time, Larry got tenure, we thought we could buy a house and settle in Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. And because of his colleagues and friends, a lot of them lived in Lexington, they all praised Lexington. That sort of grew us here, and we did come out and drove around. We found that there's Hayden, there's a town pool, there's a lot of things, more than just schools. So we decided to buy a house here. And many people came for the schools, but they would leave after the kids leave, uh, finish high school. Mm -hmm. But we just stayed on for 50 years, but we, we just love it here. Uh, so when you first moved into Lexington, um, how many f Chinese families were here? Not many. I think our kids, they went to Estherbrook, uh, the two of them, and there may be another age or something Asian uh, students. So there was really not many Chinese families here. But that was in 1966. It was uh -huh. a long time ago. Uh -huh. yeah. So that kind of brought all the family, Chinese family, together very closely, right? Uh, not really, okay. because you know, you make friends because of the children, mm -hmm. and that their children were older. Yeah. And so we were, we were friendly with them, but they had high school kids, or uh, so uh, it's really not, uh, we're not that close with other families. And because uh, I think everybody has a busy life with their family, yes, with yes, their work, yeah. and so it wasn't much of a, you know, Tight, tight. No, yeah, uh, 60s are quite different from uh -huh. when it was done. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Right. So we're more friendly with our neighbors uh -huh. because the kids are about the same age and we uh -huh. cl live close to uh, one another. Uh -huh. So we made a lot of good friends in our neighborhood. So what is the impression uh, when you first moved into Lexington? Well, I find Lexington was a very accepting town. Uh -huh. I didn't notice that I was different. In fact, I think our kids, when they go to school, they only see Caucasian faces, more or less. So they don't f feel, they didn't feel that they were different. And at the bus stop, you know, they were all friendly kids, the neighborhood kids. And I find that Lexington was really quite nice. I felt right at home. What inspired you to get involved with the town fairs and back in 1966? Well, I've told that story many times. My neighbor, the Sandys, uh, they're very, they were very and still are very active in town meetings and all that. So Edie, Edie Sandy, uh, asked me to help her to run for town meeting members. I say, what's that? Mm -hmm. I didn't know because coming, I just graduated from college, got married, and I didn't know anything about uh, small town politics. Also, she explained to me, she said she wants to run, and uh, would I help her to make signs, to make phone calls? I say phone calls, I'm not good at it because I stutter when I get on the phone. But I can make signs, I can uh, help her hold signs for her. So I begin to learn about small town politics and there's a school committee, we don't have a mayor. Oh, we have a, a selectman, board of selectmen, five people, all volunteers, they don't get paid for anything. Uh, so more and more, 
I got interested. And one thing about getting involved is once you get involved, you meet very interesting people because people are similar to you. They're all volunteers. They're all interested in doing what they're doing. We made friends. I thought that's great. Uh, that's one way to make friends also. And I felt uh, that uh, one should, if you live in this community, don't think of this town as a place you're renting a house or something. This is your home. And when it's your home, you take care of your home, you take care of your town, you do whatever uh, yeah, it's good for the town. Mm -hmm. So I was uh, involved like that. Uh, so, yeah, Larry, just supplement yeah. a little bit. I, uh -huh. yeah, <laughs> you see, uh, my wife has been through most of the talking, but I'm here really as a supporting role. Uh, you know, despite my professional involvement outside, I'm better known in town as Sophie Ho's husband. <laughs> so, but I came to this uh, country uh, quite young, basically a teenager, all alone. So I got involved with the American uh, earlier, and uh, I think a little bit differently since I basically sort of grew up here. And I always felt that uh, one should become mainstream and get involved and not like some Chinese lives in Chinatown and doesn't even have to get involved with America at all. Uh, so I've uh, always, uh, you know, after we get married, I said, you know, when we move to Lexington, we ought to get involved. But she really deserves all the credit. She did all the work. I really <laughs> suggested that she should do so. But it's so nice that you support her to, oh, to oh, get involved, yeah, yeah, right? Uh, yeah. Because it does take a lot of time to, you know, to volunteer yes, and, volunteer. you know, out of your uh, regular house um, work. And so, you know, that's yes, really yes. nice of you to, to support that. I lived so. through the period of 50s. Uh -huh. That's before the civil rights area. Oh, really? Know? So I've experienced a lot of things most people today wouldn't think of. Wow. So, uh -huh. and uh, that sort of encouraged me to become more involved in the uh -huh. community, right. in the uh -huh. uh, political process, and so forth, too. So I didn't realize you grew up in yeah, like, basically the I grew United up States. Here. Okay. Yeah, okay. I left home at 15. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's a separate experience. Right. Very interesting uh -huh. of coming to the States all alone. Will be another day, another show, yeah. right? <laughs> and also, I'd like uh -huh. to mention another person is Jack Edison, uh -huh. the oldies of Lexington, all know him. Uh -huh. He ran for selectman and uh, he also inspired me. One day he called me, he says, I'm running for re-election. Uh -huh. I want you to be my campaign manager. I said, what do I know about campaigning? Uh, he said, don't worry, uh, I'll show you. We'll work together. So timidly, I went to his house. I didn't know where to start. What do you mean, run a campaign? So he patient explained to me, introduced other people to me. He knows that I work hard. Mm -hmm. If you give me a job, I will plan and do things well. And with his help, I learned all about grassroots campaigning. And uh, I'm happy to say he got reelected. <laughs> We're really part of the town. We're really yes. part of the yeah, town. Yeah. Right. Not just a tenant. We're homeowners. And we are Lexingtonians. People ask me, where are you from? I said, from Lexington. I lived here six, 50 years. Uh, I, you want me to say I'm from China? No, I also left China early to go to college here. So Lexington is home. Um, what was your personal experience when you start uh, volunteering for school and the town affairs in um, Very favorable because people, there weren't so many Chinese. So if you see somebody with the Asian face, people welcome me. To be honest, I I know there's discrimination, but I personally has hardly ever experienced, that's what I said before, I find Lexington very accepting. Uh, they just treat me one of them. Uh, maybe it's my personality. I like people. I talk to people. I think that that that's a big part of it. Your personality is so warm, so welcoming, and uh, you know, willing to work with other people. 
So in your opinion, how does Lexington differ from other town uh, back then in 1966? I think even back then and even now, do you agree? Mm -hmm. In that sense, very similar. Lexington is different. Uh, it's a small enough town that your voice can be heard. A person's voice in a large city of uh, a million or like that. Sometimes you just don't want to get involved because nobody listens to you. In Lexington, it's different. You have a voice. If you want to do something, I always uh, said to people who says, "Oh, I don't vote. It's only my one vote." No, I say you register. If you don't register, you cannot vote. If you don't vote, you can. You don't have a voice. If you don't have a voice, then you're controlled by other people who do vote, who do make their choices. So speak up. So I did a, re a voter registration drive. I got the f town book. You know, we have a town book. I jot down all the Chinese-looking names, found, found their phone. At that time, people were listed, were listed in the phone book. Now you have cell phone, you know. Mm -hmm. I, I jot down, put in the computer, print out. I gave my friends a sheet that says, call these people, tell them to go to register. And they did, they helped me. And so we had a register maybe 50, 60 at that time. Of course, granted, I couldn't do that now. There are too many Chinese names that I, I couldn't do it. But at that time, it, it was feasible and we did register. Uh, people. Yeah, I might add that I think it's about 10 years ago, Boston Globe had a story about the uh, uh, registration, voter registration of Chinese American. And Lexington is one of the town they sampled. Uh -huh. And here, the Chinese American or Asian American voter registration uh -huh. is six times than the other towns. Uh, that's about 10 years ago. So, so yeah, that's because can, uh, her. <laughs> yes. Uh, because those efforts her. do pay off. So tell me a little bit about your fun memories living in Lexington. Oh, we, see, it, it's uh, really lovely. We moved into our present house. That was the last house of the development. Uh, developers started building houses three years before we moved here. So that was the last house. It was a dead end place. We moved in. And fortunately, our neighbors were also newcomers. We had no old friends, so we became, became very tight. Even after 50 years, they're still there. We're the best friends. The, and the kids uh, played in the neighborhood, and uh, it's really uh, uh, very good. And also, as I said, I felt I was accepted where I went, for instance, uh, PTA. The, the, I even joined Tang. Uh, Democratic Town Committee. I find people welcome me. And of course, if you are a volunteer, they can't fire you. So that's a, a very good feeling. And of course, whether they ask you to volunteer again, we don't know. But if you're a good volunteer, they want you back. Just like I said, Jack said, you'll be my campaign manager. I, I don't know anything about campaigning, but obviously he had faith in me. He says, I can teach this girl, and uh, he's much older than I, <laughs> Jack. So he, he taught me, and I'm a willing student. I learned, so I have really very fond memories. The kids, when they were little, we went to Patriot's Day Parade, and uh, two years ago, Cal, that's Chinese American Association of Lexington, Cal, and was invited to march in the uh, uh, Patriot State Parade. We were honored and very happy. We led the, uh, a group of 30 people marched for the such time. We are involved now, and we're very happy. I always sort of jokingly tell people I lived a very un-American life. <laughs> Not you said like patriotic or loyal, but all my life since graduating finishing school, I worked at one job from which I retired. I had one wife for 56 years, to whom I still married. I bought and lived in one house for the last 50 years. 
All my children went to the same kindergarten, elementary school, middle school, high school, and university. I only had one accountant to do my tax for the last 50 years. My lawyer, I was my lawyer's first client until he retired. <laughs> so uh, I live, a, in some sense, I live a very monotonous life, but I live the American dream. So as um, more Chinese um, family move into Lexington, as a new Lexington residence, um, what experience you can share with them um, looking back 50 years? Get involved. It, you know, uh, I would say uh, five years ago, we had one town meeting member, a town Chinese American meeting member, and Peter Lee, who was born in America. So he is a true American in that sense, so he get involved early. Uh, people don't want to get involved. People say, oh, I don't speak English, not good enough. That's rubbish. Uh, <laughs> you, you know enough English. There's no ex Or I have small children. Uh, that's not true. It's just they don't know how to get involved. It takes someone, some older residents, older in terms of age and uh, being uh, in Lexington, to get them started and tell them that it's not that difficult. Uh, you can do it if you're willing to spend the time. So I think you get to introduce them to new things like uh, join the town committee. Where do we find a town committee? Well, there's a town book. There are list of 50 community, uh, co committees. I always tell people, you go sit in one of the meetings and find out if you're interested in what they are talking about, what they're involved in, go and tell them, if you, I'd love to join you. Uh, when there's a vacancy, they should ask you. So y you just get to show them how to get started, and they learn fast. Yeah. And Another Mary, thing yeah. is you know, the Chinese culture, particularly the experience of China in the last 150 mm -hmm. years. People learn very early that don't get involved politically. It's deadly, it's not good for you, keep you uh, not, uh, not to the grindstone and just work hard, obey the law, don't get involved. So one of the things we have to overcome is when they come here over here, that particularly in a town like Lexington, a small town, if you get involved, you can actually get things done. And many, many, and you sort of teach them by examples. This is again some kind of old history, but uh, a lot when the Chinese immigrated here, sometimes they want to bring their parents over and uh, they want to apply for living in a senior housing in the Lexington, public housing. And through teaching them, if you get involved, this is, you can actually get these things done. And now, I mean, if you go to the senior housing, there's a lot of Asian American, particularly Chinese American seniors living there. So once they see by example, that by getting involved, you can actually affect the outcome uh, of uh, town affairs, then they become a changed person. They're willing to volunteer to things. Because of the background the Chinese, Larry just said, people don't get involved, people are shy, or say, how? Well, there are many, many inf uh, people, resources in town. If you want to, you can find out. Uh, I give you an example. Years ago, I was uh, doing a fundraiser for the first Cary Library uh, enlargement and renovation, and I was very involved with fundraising. And uh, one day, uh, the person who called me said, we have a new resident here, and she wants to know if there's a Chinese organization that she could join and be part of the town. This was Dara Chung. She is a great girl. She found me. So she called me, I told her all about things. So she was the different, she was different because she's willing and want to participate, to find out more, about, rather than just move her, moved here with her two daughters and just live happily as a private family. So she found me and I introduced her to 
uh, our meetings. She came to our meeting, get very involved. She's still very involved in town. So she's the exception, but most people don't. So I would like to tell people that if you move here, you don't know where to find. It. Call the town hall, find out if there's a Chinese organization. They will tell you uh, who the contact person. Uh, get involved. This is your home. You speak up. People will hear you. You don't say anything, then don't complain if things don't go your way, right? If you have something, run for town meeting. Um, get your voice in. You can vote. You can vote yes. You can vote no. So get involved and give back to the community because we enjoy so much. It's not just the schools. Uh, we have town pools, recreation. We have this beautiful community center.、Uh, We enjoy a whole lot from Lexington. Then give back in terms of time. If there's a fundraiser, give it, and、uh, just pretend this is your own home. Chinese are more home family oriented, as Larry always said. For family members, I do anything, everything. But otherwise, yeah, the social responsibility is not very much in the Chinese culture. Do everything for your family, survive, and don't worry about, don't get involved outside. And so the idea of giving back is something that we should, we have to teach the new arrivals to follow. This is America now, it's different from、uh, in China. Five years ago, there was only one town meeting member. Now we have seven. Uh, that's a、uh, So when townwide elected office, that's right. The first townwide is the housing authority. And someone is ready for the school committee. Another townwide this, this next、right. year. It is right. That was this year.、Absolutely. So we have started. I don't want to give pe people feel that we're down on the Chinese American election. No, we are very encouraged by the recent phenomenon、uh, that we have started. We have a long way to go. But if we continue, we'll get there.